A few hours ago, the Russian military published another interesting footage where you can see the destruction of an armored vehicle Humvee along with five armed militants in the Kharkiv direction of the front. Later, it turned out that these militants were U.S. mercenaries of one of the private American military companies, carrying out Pentagon's orders on the territory of Ukraine. So, the footage clearly shows how a Russian FPV drone strikes an American armored vehicle along with armed mercenaries. It is noteworthy that after the first strike, the mercenaries did not even try to escape, which indicates that many of them died on the spot or were seriously injured. To finally finish off the armed mercenaries, the Russian military launched two more strikes on an American armored vehicle. The footage shows how the second FPV drone misses the target and hits nearby trees. However, the third drone accurately hits the target, leaving no chance for wounded mercenaries to survive. It is reported that as a result of this attack, five American mercenaries were killed. Most likely, they were active duty soldiers and officers of the U.S. Army and were on the territory of Ukraine under the guise of representatives of private military companies. By the way, it is reliably known that it was the Ukrainian partisans, with pro-Russian views, who helped the Russian military to detect and destroy American mercenaries in the Kharkiv direction of the front. It is reported that these were Ukrainian partisans from Kharkiv, who gave the Russian military all the necessary information to destroy these US mercenaries. In general, war correspondents note that over the past 20-30 days, the activity of pro-Russian partisans has increased rapidly not only in the Odessa and Nikolaev regions, but also in the Kharkiv direction of the front. For example, yesterday, a military expert and retired lieutenant colonel of the People's Militia of the Luhansk People's Republic, Andrei Marachko, said that on June 4, 2024, in the city of Chowiv, Kharkiv region, pro-Russian partisans attacked a military vehicle of the armed forces of Ukraine using a homemade kamikaze drone. As a result of this attack, four officers of the Ukrainian army were killed. Moreover, similar incidents also occurred in Odessa. Over the past few days, three military vehicles of the Ukrainian army have been destroyed in this port city. It is reported that these military vehicles of the armed forces of Ukraine were destroyed by arson and improvised explosive devices. Currently, in the northern, central, southern, and eastern parts of Ukraine, there is an intensification of Ukrainian citizens, who in every possible way help the Russian military to carry out combat missions deep behind enemy lines. Many of these Ukrainian citizens even join the pro-Russian partisans and are actively fighting against the Ukrainian army and NATO forces. Meanwhile, in the northern part of the Kharkiv region, Russian troops took control of another strategically important settlement. We are talking about the border village of Sotnitsky Kazachok, located 60 kilometers west of Volchensk. According to war correspondents, Russian troops not only occupied the entire territory of this settlement, but also established control over a 5-kilometer territory south of this village, coming close to the settlement of Goryev Kazachok. Thus, it becomes clear that the Russian army continues to stretch the front, creating even more problems for the armed forces of Ukraine. The United States has already responded to this situation, saying that Russia should freeze its offensive and stop seizing Ukrainian territories. In particular, Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs, James O'Brien, officially declared that if the Russian army continues to capture Ukrainian towns and villages, expanding the front, the United States will allow the armed forces of Ukraine to increase the range of missile strikes on Russian territory. A few days before the capture of the village of Sotnitsky Kazachok by Russian troops, Biden's national security adviser Jake Sullivan said the same thing. 
According to him, if Russian troops continue to expand the front, Washington will allow the armed forces of Ukraine to strike at Russian military bases, located deep in Russian territory with the help of American missiles. It is clear that the United States is very concerned that the Russian army is stretching the front. And Washington is trying to stop Moscow in all different ways, even going to deliberate escalation of the conflict. However, the capture of the Sotnitsky Kazachok by the Russian army in the northern part of the Kharkiv region indicates that Moscow ignores Washington's threats and continues to expand the front, finishing off the armed forces of Ukraine on the battlefield. Commenting on this situation, war correspondents noted that shortly, all remaining border settlements in the Kharkiv and Sumy regions may come under the control of the Russian army. According to the head of the military administration of the Sumy region Vladimir Artyuk, Russian sabotage and reconnaissance groups have significantly increased their activity in the Sumy region. Vladimir Artyuk is sure that all this indicates that Russian troops will soon try to capture the main border settlements in the Sumy region. Moreover, the General Staff of Ukraine confirmed that the same activity of Russian sabotage and reconnaissance groups is also observed in the Chernihiv region. In Kiev, they fear that if Russian forces attack Ukraine in several directions at once, the armed forces of Ukraine just will not stand it, and the front will collapse in the first hours of active hostilities. However, military expert and head of the Ukrainian Center Third Sector, Andrei Zolotarev, expressed confidence that the Russian army will adhere to the so-called creeping offensive, gradually, slowly gnawing off pieces of Ukrainian territory. According to him, in two years of fighting, the Russian army has become a serious force to be reckoned with. We should not assume that the Russian troops will make any mistake that will complicate their position on the battlefield. On the contrary, what is happening on the battlefield now indicates that the Russian troops are carefully considering their every step. This time, the Russian army managed to create such a situation on the battlefield that the armed forces of Ukraine simply were unprepared for this turn of events. And now, the Ukrainian High Military Command simply does not know what to do to somehow fix the situation of the Ukrainian army on the battlefield, Andrei Zolotarev said.